fine. You can do all the sharing if you want, because I don't have time to do it. You got it. All right. You're listening to the Casual Sports Show. The show exclusively known as the voice of the Arizona Cardinals fan club, the Bird Gang. Now with your host, Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E. Bird Gang on three. One, two, three. Bird Gang. <laughs> Welcome into the Casual House, Bird Gang, Suns Nation, and all you wonderful fans out there in the valley. It is the Casual Sports Show. I'm your host, Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E, from the Casual Sports Studios, and my main man in the house, Sean McCown, the co-host of Casual Sports. We are back to give you our perspective on what's going on in the valley with our sports teams. You want to follow us? Hit us up on our four major outlets of course y'all know we're on facebook live twitter instagram and our youtube page all with the same tag and always will be the same tag casual sports k-a-z-u-a-l and a z is always at the end of the word sports so we also are sponsored by the good folks down at customer first solution your one-stop spot for all of your home care and home repair needs, plumbing, electrical, you name it, Customer First Solutions does it for you. And, of course, their specialty, interior, exterior painting, 30% lower than the competitor price in the Valley. You give them a call at 480-877-0255, 480-877-0255 to get your quote. Customer first solutions like the old days. You as a customer always still come first. Sean McConnell in the house. What's up, my brother? Man, I had to I had to uh, open up all this merch that I got. <laughs> got a nice care package, Cove. <laughs> I saw that someone got a big old desk now. The executive <laughs> desk came in and... And things are looking different. Oh, uh, like yeah, man. It's been a minute. We've been out for Our a minute. birthday month is, is Oh, here. this is it. Yeah, the back-to-back days, 29 bang, and 30. Bang, bang, bang. That's, the, that's, how, that's how we roll, man, 29 and 30. Those are the most important days of the year in this spot. So, and yeah. the 20th. So how is life after, you know, with the fam and everything treating you since we've been out for, for a minute? We've been busy, man. I've been uh, putting that stimmy money to good work. Oh, yeah. Backyard. Got some pavers done. Okay. Jacuzzi coming. Th- thank you, government. I wow. Guess. Y'all know that ain't free money, no. We Somebody going to pay the piper somewhere. <laughs> 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 we all, all got our hands like, woo, woo, yeah. We about to pay back something somewhere. It's going to hit us in the wallet somewhere. I'll generate the economy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that money. I'll generate the economy right now. I got some ideas. Yeah, a lot of busy stuff going on, man. The shows and the network is growing by leaps and bounds. And Bird Gang, Suns Nation, all you guys out there on Facebook Live and all the fans that continue to watch us and support the shows and support the network, we appreciate you because you are the reason why we keep rolling and why things is going the way they are going. The station is going not only in Arizona, but we are going all around the globe now. From what I know, we like national around somewhere, somewhere. I don't. I gotta <laughs> check out the thing stats and figure out where. But we all over the place now, so we getting people in from everywhere. Uh, I guess that's because we had my man Flex in the house, and now we all of a sudden going all over New Jersey, and now we all over the East Coast. So, hey, I'm not complaining. Let it roll. But uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and find out, man. What we gonna talk about? Go ahead and what's going on in the crazy world of sports? Cause there's a lot of stuff to chat about. Uh, what's on tap today before I do that? We got the main man from Fox 10 News. Richard Sines is going to join us and to talk some Cardinals and some Suns with us, only from his perspective. And uh, y'all know Richard Sines always has that, that take that makes you go, oh, man, I didn't think about that. So join us. Sit back, relax. Get your Cardinal fix, your Suns fix. Let's find out what else we can talk about. What's going on? What's going on? Well, it looks like the NFL is starting to make their moves as far as 
uh, the protocols for uh, COVID-19 testing uh, as far as the vaccine goes. Uh, they got uh, some rules that went down today for staff members of the NFL teams. And uh, let's see, the rule is all staffers that refuse to be vaccinated without religious or medical reason will not be eligible for tier one or tier two status. That means they won't be permitted around a football only restricting area or be in the pr proximity of any of the players. So, I mean, you can say, no, you don't want to be vaccinated, but you're not going to be able to come in the facility and do the normal thing. Now, if you're, if you're a team doctor, if you're a nutritionist or all those people that if you don't want to take the vaccine, then, well, guess what? You're not going to be working because you can't be around the people you need to have your hands on to do things. And then you can't do a physical from a Zoom. So. <laughs> so the NFL is starting to prepare to get ready for things, man. And the league, the league's vaccination agreement with the players, the league that with the players right now is in uh, and up in the air right now. They're doing some negotiating to see what they're going to do as far as the players go. But you got to think that this is all getting prepared to have a somewhat normal type of season, right? You would think, but, you know, I, I'm not going to be surprised if some of the players don't want to do that, and some of them are going to be big names. And Oh, yeah, I didn't you, think you of didn't. that. Yeah. But you did say with religious exemption, you might find a lot of people finding their faith this season. So, hey, that's <laughs> hey, in disguise right there. You might think that's funny, but that's real, though. That's, ex that's what I'm saying. You, you look around and people dropping like flies. I mean, uh, shout out to DMX, just passed away. I ain't saying it's from COVID, but just, I mean, people dropping like flies, like, I mean, high profile people dropping. Yeah. And, and a lot of them with some COVID issues. So, yeah, everybody's starting to turn to some type of source. And, hey, man, you better know something. <laughs> That's all I can say. You better know something. Uh, at least try, at least. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. But a lot of these players, man, especially the guys that opted out last year, I think those guys are itching to get back on the field. They got oh, to yeah. be. I mean, guys that, that the Patriots were out, all the guys we had out, everybody's got to be saying, okay, it's got to be a little bit safer than it was last year. They got some hold on this thing, so I, I guess I can come back take the vaccine i'm playing but you're right it could be some people that's not gonna take it yeah man uh real quick also we got julian edelman has called it a career bro tell no, me yeah. tell me tell me the answer to this question should he be in the hall of fame and if he's in the hall of fame is it because of bill belichick and tom brady's system that got him in the hall of fame or is it his talent alone that got him in the hall of fame and we already know the answer to that question because I don't he's think he's Hall of Fame material, but what about you? He's definitely not a first ballot guy. It's going to take him a while to get on there. Right. Um, it's definitely because of the system. But he might prove us wrong because I give him about three weeks until he's in Tampa Bay. <laughs> but, hey, I, the good news about that, I, I have been itching to say this to you. The good news about this is when, I'm not saying if, but when Julian goes to Tampa Bay, that's what's going to keep Larry from going there. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point. He probably just did that retirement to get away from Belichick just like Gronk did. And just like Brady had his chance to get out of there. So I got let me get over there with him. But then he can't come over to Tampa Bay and try to make this all new New England all over again and rule New and rule Tampa Bay with that New England stuff when they already got their little, you know, set stars already where he can throw the who he can throw the ball to. They're, they're, at a, they're at a standstill with Antonio Brown. You bring in Edelman. You save the Cardinals from losing Larry Fitzgerald. I think it's a, a great news. This is great news for Arizona. All right, so Jeez. I got I to cut things short because I got the man coming in, and I don't want to keep him waiting in his time waiting. We got him in the house right now from Fox News 10, the anchor, the man who's running everything down there at Fox 10. Richard Sines is in the house, and y'all see him in the suit and the whole nine deal. What's going on, Rich? What's up, man? This is all I had that was clean. Oh, was yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, we know. That's all you had that was clean. But, hey, man, welcome back into the casual house, man. It's been a minute, bro. How you been? It, it, it's been well, man. You guys are looking good. You guys are having fun, I can see. And oh, yeah. You got the house nice and clean. So, <laughs> you know, man, you got all kinds of cool stuff in the background. I'm impressed. Hey, I'm man, impressed. we got to keep it out there. The more they keep seeing this logo, the more they get tired of it. They're going to be like, hey, man, I, I know that dude. They got, exactly. they got us up there on the billboards, out there on the freeways and everything. So, yeah, we got to pump it, it out, it. man. 
Hey, man, I appreciate you coming in and giving us some of your time. And, uh, man, uh, it's been a wild off season for our Cardinals and Suns. This has been one of the most exciting years of 2021 that I can even remember. Both teams are just, you know, doing things that you go would never happen here. <laughs> so start with the Cardinals, man. What, what is your take? Of course, now they just got James Conner coming into the, into the, in the fold. What, is your, what are your thoughts on that pickup, man? I, I like it. You know, I, I think uh, after using, losing Kenyon Drake to the Raiders, you needed somebody to come in that has experience. And he, you know, he has plenty of experience, big game experience with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's a good kid, good character kid. You're not going to worry about him right. off the field. I could, I think he could be a very good compliment to Chase Edmonds, kind of a thunder and lightning. He could be the short yardage situation guy, but still hurt you coming out of the backfield because he did that with the Pittsburgh oh, Steelers. Yeah. Oh, so I yeah. think his, his style of play fits very well with the Arizona Cardinals. And of course, he has some familiarity with the running backs coach. So, you know, he had his best year with the running backs coach with the Arizona Cardinals in Pittsburgh in 2018 when he was a pro bowler. So this guy can put up big numbers when given the opportunity. Yeah. Sean, what is it about the Cardinals and Steelers that always do these deals? And it only happens on one side of the defense. It's always, we're taking the Steelers, you know, from, you know, they don't, we don't ever go Cardinals to Steelers. What's up with that? <laughs> I, I think it's just that that jaded mentality since we, <laughs> we lost to them in the Super Bowl, man. I think it's just that, like, you know, you got beat by them. And you, oh, you, you got to go join them. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Good, good I don't point. Know. Good point. Plus, you know, plus, where would you rather live, Pittsburgh or Arizona? Hey, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so these are the Steelers West. And, you know, the, if you're going to cherry pick from a team, from a, from a franchise, the Pittsburgh Steelers is not a bad team. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. From, especially when it comes uh, to, to coaches because, uh, you know, uh, Ken was uh, was fantastic, and of course, Bruce Jarians was also fantastic. Right. So uh, you were in the you were in the press room, and I asked you this earlier. What, what is what is the vibe about the injury history with Connor? Is anybody giving any, you know, the negative vibe or hey, he might not make it type of thing, or was it like, hey, man, you, this is you never know, you might catch lightning in a bottle, and this dude might go back to that Pro Bowl status, and you never know. It's not that much of a risk bringing him in here, right? Yeah, and he was asked about that. You know, his history his injury history and his toe injury recently. Right. And that w what really concerns me because, you know, people think, oh, it's just a toe. But when you're off, you're playing football, you're on your tippy toes the whole time. That's you got to put it off. You got to take off. You need that burst. I mean, Deion Sanders and Jack Lambert, two of the greatest defensive players to ever play, had to retire because of toe that's injuries. That's so true. Yeah, so, that's so that's a serious injury there. But he says he feels fine. And, and when you think of it's just a one-year deal, right. you know, both with him and A.J. Green, and I think that's what it is, is kind of one of those show-me contracts. Exactly. And maybe, like you just said, catch lightning in a bottle. Right. Let me ask both of you guys this. If, if, if Steve Kime, it feels like right now he is going for everything. He's going for it. I mean, all the moves that he has made up to this point. Do you think he's got one more go for it move when draft night comes? Is he going to just do something that we, didn't, that we just don't expect? Like, I mean, get that next – big player or next big name or something that nobody's expecting to happen. You, what do you expect on draft night, Rich? Yeah, you, you know, with, especially with, with Steve Kime. I mean, he, he's been willing to – I would hate to play poker with Steve <laughs> Kime because I don't know what this guy is going to do. I have no clue. Because he loves either. to gamble. And, and you know, the, this offseason he's been fantastic, I right, think. Right. When you got J.J. Watt, you know, that was great. Malcolm Butler Ooh. was a great pickup All for, good you know, for a quarter. So come draft night, I, I think they're in a good spot at number 16. There's a lot of cornerbacks that are available. I like J.C. Horn. I do, too. Uh, the, the kid that's, you know, Joe Horn's son. He's got the, you know, NFL pedigree. He's a big-sized kid. A lot of a lot of people are liking the Farley kid uh, from Virginia Tech. But, you know, he had he just had back surgery. Right. He, he sat out last year, had back surgery, didn't get to work out in his pro day. But people say when he's healthy, he's the best corner on the board. That's if he's healthy. You know, but also – you know, that was the same situation with DK Metcalf. You know, a lot of people passed on him because he was coming off surgery and he had, you know, neck surgery. And people were like, well, I don't know. Well, guess what? He, he got healthy. Exactly. He's making everybody pay for it. Yeah, feel free to chime in here, Sean. I mean, I don't, I don't know your, your point, your your uh, your uh, take on who we should take in this draft, but. I'm calling my shot right now. Steve Kimes got one more in him, one more bolt in the chamber. He's going to trade up and get. Picked out of oh, Florida. I would hope that would happen. That's like offense. That, 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 that is team. not going to happen, but I would love to see that happen. <laughs> calling my shot. I'm pointing, pointing outfield. I'm calling my shot. Rich, I what do you, you think? If that, if that happens, 
If that happens, we got to buy this guy dinner. Man. You I mean, know, that. Least, wow. You, you got to be thinking right now that this dude is like, look, I ain't got nothing to lose but this job, so I'm going right. for it. So, you know, I, mean, I, I mean, for real, from the, from the past, you know, the draft has not been his friend. You know, we know he's got a lot of things that did not go as well that he thought would go, you know, p- draft picks. So, who do you think, as far as positioning-wise, who, I mean, because everything we have on this team with the one-year deals and two-year deals, and, and we kind of set for the next two years, but future-wise, where are we at future-wise going forward as need that we need to go get in the draft? It has Definitely to be corner, the corner, right? The right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, Robert Alford uh, has not played a single regular season snap for the Arizona Cardinals. Wow, once. yeah. Right. Having said that, in the last two training camps, he was the best, one of the best players in all of training camp. He was fantastic both times. Right. This guy can ball, but, boy, he's had some huh. really bad luck since coming to Arizona. I mean, right. this, this is the guy that intercepted Tom Brady in the Super Bowl right. and returned to the house when he played for sure the Atlanta Falcons. So sure he can play at a very high level if he's on the field. And, and this past injury, I was just really heartbroken for him. I was, because too. For, for a second year in a row, he was doing so well. And I was like, finally, okay, he's going to be great. And then I'm like, no, 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 he didn't get hurt. And so the, the fact that he's going to, he comes back on the cheap with a real chip on his shoulder is going to be great. But at the same time, you can't rely on that. And also, I don't think you can rely on a rookie to come in as well. So I, mm. I would be surprised if the Cardinals draft the corner and then still get a veteran corner in the free agent market, another one. Oh, wow. Okay. So did yeah. you get a chance to talk with P2 before he left? And what was your take on P2 exiting from the from the Valley? I mean, was it hard to kind of watch him leave, or was it like you knew it was pretty much time? You know, it was a little hard, you know, because, you know, we've seen that guy from day one, and, right. and he was phenomenal. I mean, I, I remember a year when, when Bruce Arians was using him at quarterback. Yeah. He was throwing <laughs> catch passes, returning kids, <laughs> shutting down wide receivers. I mean, he, he was the Larry Fitzgerald of that defense for yeah, so many years. Correct. And I really enjoyed watching him play. And then to see him go to Minnesota was just kind of a head scratch. Yeah, that was me. a head scratch. He, he talked about, you know, he talked about wanting to win, wanting a quarterback that can spin it. You know, and then he's like, well, then why are you going to Minnesota? <laughs> well, I guess he got 10 million reasons. You yeah, know? That, that was it. It had to be the money. It's got to be the money on that end because it's definitely not Minnesota where, he where he's getting a championship. But this right. Cardinal team, guys, and I know, you know this your opinion on this, but this Cardinal team, to me, has no excuses not to be a playoff team next year. So, so give me, give me an excuse that could happen B- besides injury. What, who, who could be responsible for this team not being a playoff team next year, Sean? Yeah, you're you're right. I mean, because go ahead, Sean. Yeah, you, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. Real good. quick. Uh, yeah, for me, it's gonna have to be cornerback play. It's got to be the secondary. Okay. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the nail in our heel. The 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 final thing that could to lose us a game or two and i don't think it's going to be the kicking solution anymore i think it's going to be <laughs> we can't tackle x y and z and we're letting guys walk into the house i don't i don't think the offense is going to be a concern i don't even think cliff's play calling late will be a concern i think it, it, if we have one it's going to be the secondary hmm. rich yeah you know i i think it will be the, the coaching ah you know, if if if, if. And, and I'm, i've been a proponent for to keep you know, Cliff Kingsbury. Right. You know, because because the guy came in, took over a five-win team. You know, and then you know he, he's improved every year. Correct. Right. So I I, I think it, the third year is the year you want to see the most progression from a quarterback and from a coach. Right. So this this is it. Like you said, there's really no excuses. They're giving him all the weapons that he needs, and I think I think you know, they will make the playoffs, and I I think he. He will continue to progress. And one thing I've been very impressed with with Cliff Kingsbury is his willingness to adjust. Right. You know, yeah. whether it's running the ball more or, you know, changing up how they approach, you know, their offensive philosophies to cater to their off to their talents that they have around them. You know, and that I think that's one thing that got Steve Wilkes fired was right. he was trying to put a square into a circle. Right. You know, it's like, that wasn't working, dude. Make exactly. some changes. Exactly. You know, and I think that's what I've liked about Cliff Kingsbury, and I think that's why, you know, he, he's going to be successful this year. But uh, that could be something that concerns me, and then maybe stopping the run. Because they were, towards the end of the year, they, they just could not stop the run. And they need to get that defensive line shored up for sure. 
I agree with you definitely from the coaching part of it because it has to be progress. It has to be progress for Cliff Kingsbury from a play calling standpoint to to controlling the whole team as a head coach. Right. Got to have control of everything. Got to got got to got to got to have control to the point. And then also Kyler being attached to him kind of right. is part of that as well. So Kyler has right. to be progressing to the next level and being a better leader on the field and off the field. And then the coach has to be the exact same thing. So yeah, those two come hand in hand. So I agree on the coaching staff. So as much hey, let me just say one thing real quick about uh -huh. Kyler Murray. A lot of people were giving him a hard time for him not being happy when they were losing. How many times did you see Kobe Bryant smiling? <laughs> Never. <laughs> How many times did you see Kobe Bryant pissed off at his teammates for not making He would get that so, little scowl on his face like, I don't think I ever saw Kobe Bryant smile. Never, more. never. You know I mean? But, but it, they, oh, he had the mama mentality. So right. what's the difference with Kyler Murray? Nothing. So I'd rather have that kind of a guy that's pissed off when they lose than a guy like, you know, uh, Anderson, you know, who was laughing at him. That's you know a good, I mean? so, you know what, Rich? That's a good point because even though, though Kyler has that scowl on his face, he never called out teammates. He's never done anything to it. Exactly. He's always been, I just want to win. And there's nothing right. wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Hey, nothing wrong I want with that. that guy on my uh, team. Exactly, exactly. There's much more we can talk about this card. We're gonna do a draft night thing. I want to get everybody's perspective on some of these prospects. But let's jump into the hottest basketball team in the NBA, the Phoenix Suns. And some things have changed over the course of a few last few days. Of course, they now just one point. They just one and a half games behind the Jazz because they lost to the Wizards of all teams, and. A major injury has gone down in Denver when they were right on our coattails. So what's your take right now to this Phoenix Suns team? We're going to be taking over this number one spot in the West soon, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, it, it's been it's been great man, just because it's been, it's been awesome. so long. And, and, and this is a Suns town, man. People love the Suns. They were the first franchise here, you know, and, and I just got to tip my cap to Chris Paul. Man. That guy. I knew he was good. Now that I watch him on a regular basis, it's it's kind of like when you're reading and then somebody turns on a light, you're like, oh, I didn't even know that light. Was <laughs> I mean, that's how big of a difference he's made because he is he's made everyone around him better, especially DeAndre Ayton, yes. who I think needed it the yes. most. I'm going to go old school on you here, and it reminds me of David Robinson when David Robinson needed that kind of like that killer, that that killer. And Avery Johnson. Avery was, Johnson. There was yeah. one, you know, when Avery Johnson was like, no, you, you're the man. Yeah. I'm throwing it down to you he and sure take did. over. And there was one particular play where I'm watching Chris Paul throw it down low to Aiden, and Aiden gives it right back. And it, because there's no fans, you could hear Chris Paul go, no, and like give it back <laughs> to him. Yeah. Take it to the right. And I was like, yes, yes, that's what I need. And I would still like to see Aiden throw it down a couple more times. Yeah. But hey, as long as he's scoring, and the way he's playing, and the way he continues to progress, I think he's the key he to is. how far this team could go. If Man, Rich, is, you just you think just team. like I do. I, I got the same. Hey. Thought. We ain't talked in how long. Uh, great minds think alike. Man, man, I got the exact <laughs> same thought. He <laughs> is the key to this playoff run, and that's why I was so concerned when he was going through the struggles. I was concerned that they didn't make a move at the trade deadline or or the buyout deadline or the buyout process. They didn't make a move for a big man behind him. And I was concerned about that because I'm going, is Aiden ready to take on 40-plus minutes a game and be the man? I mean, come on. But now I see this play he's playing now. I love his attitude right now. Yeah, and, and I think I think the fact that they didn't make the move showed some confidence right, in him. Right, right. Oh, okay. Good point, good That's point. That's the kind of guy good he point. is. He will respond to something like where they say, look, man, we didn't make a move because we believe in you. All right. So it's not time for you to prove us right. Right. And that's what he's doing, and that's what I like. And, and, and you know, the guy's still a kid. He's still young. The guy can fall out of bed and get a double-double. You know what I mean? So he, yeah. he's only going to get better. And I'm glad, actually, that the Suns didn't make a move because that chemistry on that team is really good it's right now. It's awesome and You right don't want to bring in a guy that's going to mess things up and stuff. So if it's not broke, don't fix it, man. Yeah, but you know? we actually did make a move. We got – Tory Craig and was that an excellent move again by James Another Jones? One. I mean, yeah, my James goodness, this dude yeah. must be a dang on wizard or something. Yeah. How yeah. does he know pieces are gonna fit like they fit together? Exactly. It's yeah, awesome. It, it, James Jones has done a fantastic yes, he has. job. Yes, he yeah, has. He really has. So, what are your expectations, guys? I mean, as far as this playoff run coming, because the guy, the teams, the Lakers are gonna get stronger at some point. The Clippers scare me. I mean, I'm just saying they do with those wings and how they pl how they play us. They they scare me. But what do you what do you think our expectation? Is? And as a fan, I know we're happy just because we're there to begin with. But is the first round 
good or is we getting to that second round is going to be good enough or or, far, or further than that Sean you got it you got to at least get to the second round my hope is that the Jazz and Lakers beat themselves up by the time <laughs> right. we get to right. either or right uh, the, but I'm not as afraid of the Clippers as you are. Paul George doesn't scare me in the playoffs. He never has. I don't Good think he ever point. will. Good so point. to me, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Western Conference Finals versus Lakers or Jazz, and hopefully they'll be tired by the time they get to us. That's that's the hope. That's the real hope, you know? Because I, I think either way is a good matchup. The Lakers are just so strong when they're fully healthy, and we all know they're resting for the playoffs. Right. Rich? You know, I I agree about getting out of the first round. You first, but first of all, the fact that we are talking Just about there. Exactly. going to the playoffs <laughs> and how far they're going to go to the playoffs. I mean, it, I had the it, number it, it, two seed to cry it out loud. We, we, nobody expected that. Normally, we're talking about tanking to get the number one pick at this exactly, time. You know? I'm exactly. looking at who the best players are in college at this time. I mean, so we've already won. Let me right. just say that. Okay, it's a it's a victory already. But yeah, I, I would be disappointed if they didn't get out of the first round. But I I disagree with Sean because the team that scares me the most is the Clippers. Yeah, and it's because of Kawhi Leonard, Patrick Beverly, those guys. I mean, Kawhi Leonard is a phenomenal player, and 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 and, and they have been the healthiest and the most consistent in the Western Conference, if you ask me. Right. So you know, yeah, yeah the Lakers are are resting, but can they turn it on at the last second? I think they're. They're resting, but they're also uh, playing with with fire by doing this. But right. you know, and I think that was one of the things that really worked in the Suns' favor of this quick turnaround and this quick off season was because it, they're young, they've got the fresh legs. LeBron and those guys have been playing for a long time. Right. They just been playing in the right. finals, so I knew they were going to rest up. But boy, they're really they're really milking this pretty pretty much. They sure are. And we got we're talking to Richard Science right here on the KSRN zoom network right now so so you mentioned Devin. you mentioned uh the clippers and i'm agreeing with you richard on that because i i'm i'm afraid of the clippers and for, for for a couple of reasons you know the Kawhi leonard having been a champion already knows how to win but from a Devin booker standpoint and you talk about patrick beverly that can get under a person's skin Devin has had some issues with chirping back and letting these dudes get to him a little bit do you think that could come into play when a play he hasn't been in the playoffs before so that could come into play when you talk about a, a chirpy mouthy clipper team coming in absolutely and and, and De- you know in Devin Booker's defense this is his revenge tour oh right? yeah he oh, he's, you can see in his demeanor it feels like, like that yeah this is my turn yeah remember me yeah. I'm back I right. got time now he said right. last time I didn't got time I got time now <laughs> so yeah he's you know and and I think he wants it so bad, sometimes it can be a detriment because right. I've never seen him complain to the referees so much and chirp with other players so much. Right. But it's proof that he, he knows he's got an opportunity here and he's not going to let it pass. Right. So it's almost channeling that in that energy, right? Because right. he's got that fire that's burning, but you got it. It's like a furnace, man. You want it to keep the place warm. You don't want it to burn the place down. There you go. So he's got to channel that energy. Man, Rich, man, I, before we let you get out of here, man, uh, I appreciate you coming in, first of all. But you you got to, I mean, give me your opinion. Coach of the year, it's got to be Monty Williams, right? It's got to be. I know there's a lot of other coaches out there doing some good yeah. things. But right. come on, now. they got to show us some job. love here. But, yeah, Monty Williams has done a phenomenal job. And I think he deserves to be coach of the year when you consider – what he did in the bubble, and then he transferred that over. Because a lot of people are saying that was a fluke. Well, right. guess what? It wasn't. Exactly. You know? And then you know exactly. he finally gets his quarterback in Chris Paul, and look what he's done. So, yeah, I, I think Monty Williams has to be the coach of the year, that's for sure. Absolutely. Man, I appreciate you coming in, man. Let's tell our listening audience, of course, where we know other than Fox 10, where they can hear you at. Give them the time and preference. And any other any other podcast thing going on that Richard Sines got going on, let us know, man. Well, yeah, yeah. Hit me up on my socials, man. I'm at oh, yeah, of at Signs, Fox 10. I'm on, you know, Twitter, uh, Instagram, MySpace. No, wait, that was a couple uh, years ago. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I'll be on. Shoot, I'm going to be on right now with my 9 o'clock show. Oh, about to start. all right. Not so much I love you guys, man. I'm, a, I'm about to start He's the straight, put us right show. before the 9 o'clock show, man. I, I'm man, I love nine, you to death, ten, Rich. Ten, yeah, <laughs> and then, of course, we have our, our 30-minute sports show, Fox 10 Sports Night at 1030 this Sunday. Uh, keep an eye out for it. And, you know, anytime you guys uh, disagree with me or agree with me, hit me up on my socials. Let me know what you think. All right, man. Love you, man. Take care. And we, till guys. next Thanks time, when this, when this playoff thing runs, we'll get you back in here. <laughs> I, I'm not, I might have to buy Sean dinner if he uh, there you prediction go. comes out right. Hey, I'm a cheap date, so uh, it's going to work out. <laughs> Wendy's, here we come. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was Richard Sides. Y'all know a Fox. 
10 news sports anchor running everything down here at Fox 10. Man, he used this as a warm up for his he show. Straight, he he used this as a warm up. That's go. freaking awesome, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man. So he covered pretty much. We covered everything, man, with the Suns and, and some Cardinals that we got a few minutes here. Anything on your mind, bro? Man, if if we don't try and go for pits, uh, yeah. Florida, uh, I'm man, you. that's a that's a pipe. I'm dreaming that we just go shootouts at that point because we know our, our secondary might not be what we need to be. We just yeah, but you're everything pretty, on the defensive you're, line, and then the offense is just indestructible. Exactly, you're pretty good when it comes to putting trades and stuff together. And what, so, what do we offer to get to move up to get this kid? Because we hardly have draft picks to begin with. I think we don't have the major draft picks that everybody wants, that three, that four, that five. You know, that was those key areas where you can give them away and just get some. So what are we going to give away? The one, the two? Look, look. The the Dolphins want the sixth pick to be traded. They, they've got picks and spades. They want something for it, right? Okay. So you give them the 16. Maybe give them one or two more out of this draft. Hmm. You, you basically sell your draft for, for pitch, right? But you got to hope he's there at six, right? Because he might be gone at four. Exactly. But exactly. I don't know if there's a player you could throw in. Maybe it's just cast considerations because the Dolphins aren't looking for players right now. They're looking for just movement, right? Hmm. So true. That's, true. Just, that's just the I, if we could get six and he's there, I feel like it could happen. Man, that would just be really, like the tie, the bow of a whole, the whole offseason. You yeah, get that. I'd throw kid, the whole man. draft at that kid. But then when you think about it, though, would they do that? Because maybe I heard this earlier, and it was a good point by who I forgot who I heard it from, but maybe it is a good point that the, the Cardinals are going more wide receiver centric, centric, I mean, more uh, orientated rather than using a passing tight end. Because like Dan Arnold, they let Dan Arnold walk. They, didn't, they, they could have kept him if they was going to have a pass and tie it in. He, he was not that bad. I mean, he was working his way to be a, to the next level. So I think I think maybe the offense is dictating if they need to tie it in or not because it looks like the coaching the coaching for the tight end or the receivers or offensive line wants to have a blocking tight end. And we got two of maybe. them right now. But, but you I only get so many times right. to get a transition, a player like, man, that kid is amazing. I'm like, if we get that, that's if we get this pitch kid, man. I, I, I'm just, I'm probably just gonna drop to the floor. That's what I'm saying because if it's one thing to have blocking tight ends for your scheme. Yes, we all get that, but if you get a guy like him on a rookie deal, right, for basically nothing, for nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. Because our money's basically tapped. Like we already asked everybody to take some pay cuts. We already got that part all taken care of. That's right. How we got honor today. Right. But you get pits. There's nobody you can double team. Man can't afford to double team anybody with that many hands on the field right you can't and he's going to be instant production but that's another key thing that's another key thing will he be instant production because you got so many other dang weapons that you have to get the ball to kyler kyler has all these weapons he got okay i gotta worry production. about connor out of the backfield i gotta worry about hop over there i gotta worry about aj over here and possibly uh, fitz being back i no. mean come on man. it's a lot it's of freaking worry. weapons it's, it's not a worry because look hopkins gets you 50 yards downfield Larry they don't even throw the ball deep to hop. They always do that little sideline out route. A sideline out for 50 yards. Uh, <laughs> but you got AJ, you got AJ for end zone targets. Okay. You got you don't have to worry about that stuff, man. You just let them catch the ball. You got that many hands, there's no drops. It's all catches. So man. it is not gonna matter. I hope you're right. At a man, time, I, I, at a time. I'm I'm anticipating them doing something big again. I don't. They, it looked like this year has been that way. I mean, like if I'm if I'm Steve Kine, I'm thinking the exact same way. Like I said earlier, hey, all I got to lose is this damn job this year. If we don't get this damn thing to a playoff run, or or get past ten plus wins, we can't we can't struggle going into the playoffs being no eight and eight or eight and seven or, or eight and nine this year. Now seventeen damn games <laughs> or nine and eight. Whatever. Well, that's gonna feel kind of weird. Oh, and seven and nine, <laughs> but. You can't struggle into. You have to be one of the front runners this year. All this freaking talent has to come together somehow mm -hmm. on the field. So and no fifth, sixth, seventh round picks nah, gonna get you there this year. I know, man. And he, yeah, I think you're right, man. I, it, it, they they got to keep going for it, man. If I'm him, that's the go for it move. Mm -hmm. Or or another go for it move would be to go up and get you know certain. Or, or you know, you want because those two corners, Sertain and uh, and Horn are not going to be there at sixteen. They might not. 
It's very I mean, then we're looking at Farley, the guy with the back injury. That, that's the guy that'll be sitting there because he's going to drop because of the back injury. So, I mean, I watched his tape. He's not bad. That I mean, he's a he's a beast. But yep. here we go again. It'll be the, it'll be the Cardinals doing the Cardinal thing. Let's take a chance on a hurt guy or take a chance on a guy with issues and try to see if we can get you know the Tyron Matthew out of him. I'm tired of the red flag yeah, first round you know, picks. The, the, the Robert Kambichis out of him. And, uh, you know, even though Tyron Matthew worked out for another team, I mean, mm. when he was here, he still was the, the honey badger. He worked out. They, he didn't go through the drug thing that everybody thought he was going to go through and fall right. into. But, I mean, but my, my point being is just, man, we don't need that same type of dude again. Let's go get one of those guys that the draft is saying, sure, sure deal. If you get this guy, toy. yeah. If you get this guy, he is instant Mint inbox. <laughs> <laughs> instant, That's what we're going for. Instant production. So, wow. I hope, man. I hope you're right, man. You, you might be the, the the genius, you know, putting that Call together. Me up, Steve. Yeah, I, I got know. An IPA with your name on it, baby. <laughs> he probably already got four or five of them in front of him anyway. You know, Steve. <laughs> hey, we all like a little beer now. <laughs> oh, shout out to Jay for the beer. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> Where's Jay at? Come on. Oh, yeah. He, he's still chilling. They're still doing their thing over there on the sports. Uh, I don't want to call them any. No, that's KDUS. You're doing that Saturday morning thing. It's jumping crazy over there, too. So, But, uh, man, I'm glad you, you know, we was able to do the show again tonight. And, bro, uh, we got the next part coming up at the end of the week. I believe a couple of other guys are coming in for the house. want to thank the guests for coming in. Richard Sines coming in and giving us some time. It's precious time. Hey. And sun's up 14 right now. Are you? Ki- I was just about to say something I'm missing. What's going on in the heat game? We up nine, 14, nine and how and much half left? left? In nine what? and a half left in the game. Okay, that's scary. Because you know, nine and a half minutes. You know what we? You know what? Lately, what they do with leads like that, going down the stretch, they start yeah, turning they rest it over a little bit and There's flopping the ball all over the place and taking ill-advised three points that don't mean nothing. The other night, I'm glad you said that. The other night, or yesterday it was. Last night. I am screaming at the television. <laughs> Aiton is killing these dudes down in the play. Why are we taking threes? Give him the ball. He was killing them down there. They couldn't stop him. And they kept firing him up. I'm like, okay, 25 threes. Okay, yeah, you want to look good for 25. You shoot 25 threes or more than 25 something threes in a playoff game, you're gonna lose. Yeah. Give him the ball. He was he had it rolling. Two nights in a row he had it rolling like that, and they wouldn't give it to him. Let him That's let him get the 30-point-plus thing, killing him in the paint. Man, but they got him playing like 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 we've been crying for, right? Yeah, it's, he's, he's, he's making us, you know. He shut me up. I, know I, yeah. I, was his, I, was his, I was his biggest critic. You know <laughs> Last night I'm going, damn, he looked like a totally different player. <laughs> Totally like, different player both right Both of us hating on the sun so much in the offseason like we yeah, did. Like, yeah. We're both pretty shut up right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, I think we just we just had too much of that disappointment so much that we just started to think that everything's going to end up a disappointment. That's some of the, some half of the damn fan base is like that. I bet you half the fan base don't, still don't believe we where we are right now, sons. Well, they're like, nah, something's going to crash and fall out somewhere. Yeah. And, and and what scares me is that that Murray injury, you know, that could that that could be anybody. And I'm hoping knocking on wood that that, that never happens. That nobody drops out injury wise. <laughs> Knock on his head, but that could be the only thing that to stop this team from progressing where they're going to end up. And Aiton's yeah. getting better and better and better. He is the key, man. He is the key. He Booker will be oh. next. Chris Paul, then Booker, then. But Aiton is the centerpiece that's going to get them through the playoffs, man. So. This has been another show, bro. Until next time, man. I'm glad to have you back in here. I know it's your show, so you you know you got to come in here. <laughs> you got to come in here and do your thing every once in a while, every you know Tuesday night. And uh, we're gonna try to get this thing with a lot of changes gonna be happening on the programming too. So uh, we'll keep them everybody uh, up to date on that coming up soon. But until next time, this has been the Casual Sports Show from Earl Burnett, my man Sean McConnell. We will catch you guys next time. Peace out.